Hi, I'm Jeremy with Noria, and we're on a mission to make the world a better place through lubrication excellence. Today I'd like to give you a few tips for easy, cheap, effective oil analysis that you can do while out in the field. Now these things are going to sound very elementary, but you can get some really good information by doing these few simple steps. First thing we want to do is when you walk out into the plant, we want to take special note of the visual oil level indicators. These things are going to be able to tell you a lot more than just the oil level. You want to look at the oil specifically, and we want to be looking at things like color change. Is the oil incredibly dark? Well, oil darkens for a reason. It could be something really bad like oil oxidation, or it could be just simply a photocatalytic reaction with sunlight. You need to figure out why that oil has darkened and stop it if it's something that is potentially bad. Other things that we want to look for are things like emulsions or cloudiness. That could be a really good indicator that you've got moisture in the system. You want to look for any free water. If you see any free water separating out into the bottom of that side glass, you also got a potential problem there. And you want to look for any sediment. If there's any sediment in there that's large enough for you to see with the naked eye, that means you've probably got a whole lot more that's so small that you can't see. And those are the ones that cause the major damage within our machines. So the first test is a visual inspection. Like I said, it's very elementary, but it can give you some really, really good information. Now the next uh, test that I want you to go out and do is called a crackle test. Now there's two ways to do a crackle test. One is politically correct, the other one could probably get you in trouble if somebody found you doing it and they didn't know what you were doing. So what the uh, premise of a crackle test is, is we're going to take oil and put it on a hot plate. And this hot plate, we want it to be around 320 degrees. And what we're actually going to do is boil out any moisture that we find in that oil. Now on a hot plate in a lab environment, it all looks great. And the other one that you can do out in the field is to basically use a spoon and a lighter. Now, like I said, it's pretty bad if somebody walks up on you, catches you doing this, but it can give you some really good information as long as you can explain to them that you're looking for water. Okay? The last one that I want you to do is called a demulsibility or an anti-foam test. This one's also really, really easy. It doesn't take a whole lot of money or time or anything like that. You're going to go down and buy a blender, and we're going to take that blender, we're going to take the oil that we want to test, and we're going to put some water in it. And we're going to hit blend and see what happens. Now you can do this uh, as, a, as an experiment to see different types of oils and how they react with that moisture. Try with a turbine oil. When you hit blend with a turbine oil with water in it, it should mix up fairly well, but then as soon as you stop blending, you should be able to see that phase separation back out into oil and free water. Now you take an automotive engine oil and you hit it in the, uh, that blender with the oil and the water together, and it's probably going to form what we call a stable emulsion. That means it's pretty much lost all its demulsibility, its ability to separate out that water, and that's a bad thing. If you're looking for more information about simple tests that you can do out in the field, visit machinerylubrication.com. You'll find hundreds of articles and videos just like this one on that subject. By the way, every issue of Machinery Lubrication Magazine is a mini workshop on lubrication best practices. And if you aren't receiving it, I highly recommend you get a subscription. Go to machinerylubrication.com to sign up.